just like society keeps shifting further left, the state community keeps shifting further rare. So now medium is the new medium rare. So I say medium well. <laughs> the Overton window of yes, stakes. yes. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I agree, but it's fucking hilarious that take. <laughs> I mean, if you say if you say well done now, people shoot you. It's <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It's damn near a crime. That shit is disgusting. A waste of meat. It's gross. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Macrodosing. It is Thursday, mm -hmm. and it is Dece we're time traveling. It's December twenty eighth. Crazy. All right, almost Whoa. the new year. I hope everybody had a merry Christmas, happy holidays, good time with their families, whoever you celebrate with. Hope you had a safe, healthy, and happy one. We're all traveling right now. I'm in Arizona somewhere. People are taking their vacations. We're celebrating with their families with holidays. But we recorded a little bit early. We wanted to do a voicemail episode to give you guys something to listen to during the week. I'm very happy to be here. Um, Big T just sent something very concerning across the group chat. That it that makes me feel old. You are old, buddy. This is you are officially old as fuck. Yeah. You want to say what it was? Uh, so today we're we're still recording last week on National Signing Day. Uh, Devin Hester Jr. today signed with the Furman Paladins. That that seems like Frank Gore having a kid in college. That, that seems plausible. This can't be. Devin I, Hester I, played for the Falcons I, like seven or eight years ago. This has to be like an early. He had an early kid. It had to be. I was in the league. A while, bro. My oldest. I had a. I had a kid in two thousand nine. That was early, my first year in the league. Devin Hester is and she's forty one. And she's fourteen. That's what I'm saying. Like he had to have a kid early. Like I'm talking about college, maybe like a college before right? that. Well, yeah. if he's forty one and his son is let's call it eighteen, that's twenty three. Yeah, well, I guess that's pretty. Oh yeah, wow, yeah, I, you're right. But that's it's probably his first kid because it's Devin Hester Jr. I imagine, like if you were that be you were up. <laughs> Devin Hester's third kid. <laughs> And got named Devin Hester Jr. Your first two kids would be like, "What the fuck?" If they were okay, boys, yeah. like, now I can oh. I could tell coming out, you're not me. <laughs> I have an eight off, man. Real quick, I got an eight off, man. Okay, what you eight off about? You talking about Big T? Always talking about shit. We need to like retire. D this shit needs to go away, bro. So and so is a national treasure. Like, get to stop it with all that shit. Just stop it. Nobody. Are you in saying it's? over applied to too many people or you just don't like it entirely name like a, like a, it, it, yeah i think i think it's a, it's a national trust it's a, like are they you know what I'm saying? like are they what is I the think, national treasure what does that I, even mean a pride I know one, of the nation i know one national treasure dolly parton used properly in that instance yeah, okay. I will definitely I I will, you'll get zero Dolly Parton slander from me that she's 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 queen. But even that just it's I think it's been so forced upon me with every time anybody does anything like viral and so and so is a national treasure. So is just a that like, no, just stop. We just that needs to retire. Retire that whole shit, man. I know it won't, but I'm just saying. That's my eight off. I agree with you. I think it is overplot. I think that and hang it in the Louvre. Yeah, need that's to be good. dialed back a little. Oh, bit. I say that. I, I, I say seen... that on the macrodosing Twitter. <laughs> what is hanging in the Louvre? What is that? I don't even know. I hang it one. in the Louvre. If, if you see any cool picture or any really anything, you're like, oh, that's cool. Hang it in the Louvre. Every cool sports picture, they that's what's tweeted out with it. Napoleon said it first. Did he? Yeah, he made the Louvre so that when he like invaded somewhere, he was like. Yo, that's some pretty tight art hanging that's in the loo. That's a good point, Billy. Yeah. Yeah. There's two things I know about Billy. He loves Napoleon and he absolutely loves Russia. These well, two those don't mix too well. That's the mind of Billy, baby. <laughs> yeah, he loves people from, I would say, from like former Soviet states that now compete in MMA. He is really into <laughs> those people. Wait, let, what? Yeah, you think I'm you think I'm wrong about that? Okay, name some people from former Soviet states. Okay, so you've got Habib, which you bring up all the time. That's technically 
Okay. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, the boxer that you like lived with for a while out in Vegas. Baval. Oh, forgot okay. about that dude. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fucking every, psyop over here. Though. <laughs> every time we talk about like toughest nations on earth, you always go directly to the stands. You're a stand stand. Okay. Yeah. There's some tough people out there. <laughs> Okay. Game recognizes game. So, <laughs> point point made. You you got some affinity. When for, you said uh, I was honestly when you said former Soviet states, I was thinking more like Eastern Europe, the Baltics. Yeah, yeah. No, Billy, I think is just more into the Caucasians. <laughs> no, no. For as it's as it's correctly oh, oh, applied. The, no, no, not the Caucasians. The Caucasus. The Caucasus region. Yes. And people from the Caucasus region are called what? I don't think they consider themselves Caucasians. They definitely do. Okay. Okay. Billy loves Caucasians. <laughs> let's, not, let's not. Breaking use, news. Let's breaking don't news. But the true, the original, the OG sense of the, the word original Caucasian. Caucasians. Like how I like OG liberals in the original sense. I hate yeah. that shit. Here we go. No. Mm -mm. Who's your not favorite OG not, liberal, not, Billy? Not taking that bait. Mm -mm. Uh, look, you Dave know. Rubin. <laughs> <laughs> Are like you mean FTR? No, he he doesn't fall into that category. Classical liberal. Classical liberal. All right, so let's do some voicemails today to get people through the holiday week. Hope you don't have to work this week, but we uh, we appreciate you if you're tuning in, no matter what. Um, the voicemails on this program are going to be brought to you by a great friend of ours. And these voicemails are going to be brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. A new Straight Talk Wireless offering is now available where you can get a Walmart Plus membership included on select Straight Talk Wireless plans for free. Only Straight Talk Wireless gives you unlimited data, talk, and text. Plus, you get a Walmart Plus membership included on select plans for free. Some of the perks of Walmart Plus through select Straight Talk wireless plans include free delivery from Walmart stores, free shipping, no order minimum, Paramount Plus membership, and member prices on fuel. Straight Talk wireless is available at Walmart and Walmart.com. All right, let's get into some voicemails. Hey, guys. This is Evan from Michigan. Um, soon I'm going to be moving out to, uh, to Boston, and I don't really have a social net there of any kind. Um, so just kind of in the past from your guys' experience, uh, what advice do you guys have for when you make a big move like that, um, the biggest one I've ever done so far, um, how, what's kind of the best way you guys have met new people, found new cool stuff to do, um, best ways to kind of get, get going pretty fast. Um, but yeah, uh, look forward to your guys' answers and stay handsome, stay beautiful, stay gorgeous. And, uh, yeah, good job. What was, what was the, it was kind of. Muffin. Yeah, I can hear that. The question he, was, he's moving. Yeah, you go ahead, Mad Dog. I was going to say, he was just moving from, I forget where. Michigan, to, to, Michigan Boston. to Boston. And wanted advice on how to do a big move and how to, you know, make make uh, make a life there. Make friends. Mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Expand in his social net in Boston. It's very simple. Okay. Go to a bar in Boston <laughs> and order a beer and then just like put the right songs on the jukebox. Usually they're like Irish adjacent and you'll just Should meet a bunch of Boston. dudes who are going to grab you and start rocking with you. And that's how you make friends in Boston. Simple okay. That. Mm. that sounds pretty easy. Nailed it. <laughs> so yeah. you, go, you go to a bar and you drink a beer and then you play a song and then you like look over the jukebox and you point out, you're like, that's me. Yeah. I made, I made that you play thin Lizzy and you're like, I did that. <laughs> And then the, the the dudes come flocking to you. <laughs> I might have to start trying yeah, maybe that. If you that. Do. dudes flocking. Got... If it's the Christmas season, put on a Christmas in New York. That gets a lot of people going. Fairy tale of New York. Fairy tale of New York. Yep. Um, yeah. R.I.P. Shane McGowan. You know, I've heard more than anything this year that I think is preposterous. A lot of Mariah Carey, uh, All I Want Is You, Christmas song slander. And... Fuck that. That is the theme song. I, I, I need to hear that 30 times every day. I love it. It's a great it. song. I don't understand you know, the slander. 
She made a banger, and you tired that she made a banger? Like, okay, switch the track. I hate that shit. But you know who who hasn't come up recently in regards to Christmas? Michael Bublé. No, he's always on my he's playlist. Fine. Yeah, he, was on uh, he, he made he made one of the greatest Christmas albums ever. Yeah, but but I like. I remember a couple years ago he hasn't stood. He hasn't you know been repeating, like he's not being played in public that much. Maybe he's always on my playlist. I got I got a nice little crimmer playlist. Crimmer playlist. Um, hey, but to do to get back on topic. On a real note, I say, like scour like local mom and pops. To me, that's like the best way to get inundated with a city. Like you know, what I'm saying, figure out what the the local cuisine is and like what people really like to eat, and like the best mom and pop joints for that shit. Like that's the that's the best way to do it. That's good advice. I would also say joining like a youth or not youth but a, a recreational adult sports league whether that's like basketball flag football soccer kickball even it's a good way to meet people that might be your age in a new city yeah where yeah. in boston is he moving did he mention that he no. didn't say he didn't dox no. himself yeah <laughs> i think i think become friends with your coworkers too we're lucky that we work in a place where everyone's great, but that I think be becoming that, friends that with your coworkers is uh, Yeah, I mean honestly, I've moved to two cities and have not met a single person that doesn't work here. I here is a very different environment than most places. Yeah. Wait, you have but, no friends outside of work? No, I don't have many here either. You've got friends. I have acquaintances. I have but, workplace co But you the Grinch though. Are we talking about people who <laughs> like to talk to other people? You the Grinch, bro. Go shoot. I just cool. I, What'd you say? I Should make a lot of friends the... shooting pool. Oh, oh that is a go to the pool. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of like Facebook. Gr- this might just be a girl thing, actually, but there is like Facebook groups you can join. Yeah. That what? Is, that yeah. Are, like city related. Yeah. Girl, this is how people get murdered. No, you know, no, it's, like, it's just like only ones. other girls. Yeah. yeah. Face. <laughs> no, it'll be like, hey, we're all going to, on a hot girl walk at Central Park at 6 p.m. Like, if anyone wants to meet up, you have to like be like like um admitted yeah wait you actually do that like i didn't do i've it, never done it but like i know a lot of girls who yeah have this like, is like this is like new new tech like this sounds like some shit I'm, i've never been privy to man yeah. oh really yeah, yeah, yeah. In I'm, New York, not, I'm not i'm not scouring I'm sh- facebook groups looking for i'm sure there's a ton in chicago take a walk <laughs> I'm, sure, no, I'm sure there's any a ton brothers in, in the houston area <laughs> yeah that's what i said it's ball probably at the a LA girl fitness, thing you know what i mean holla at me that no, might I, actually work. Actually. I was going to say that sounds like a good way to. In New York, there was a cool thing where it was a website you could, because it's really hard to play indoors in New York. And there was a website you could book a time and there'd be like 15 slots for 15 people to show up at like an elementary school or something. Mm. And then you'd play basketball. That's good. Cool. Aaron, you could do that. Bond, though. You could do that in Houston be like, let's meet up at the Galleria. We're going to go for a walk around. And it's good exercise. Let's go mall walk as a group of dudes. I love niggas mall don't really, niggas don't really, dudes don't really gather to walk like that. You know, what I'm saying? That's more girls do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all walk, be, yeah, y'all be walk, power walking the shit. You know, what I'm saying yeah. dudes, dudes get up to do things like pick up. Not saying, I guess walking is things. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Mad Dog, would there be like alcohol involved in in the girl walk? That's what I'm saying. Like just walking just, doesn't sound. There could be like, oh, we're gonna walk and then we'll we'll go to the bar after. Get like yeah. do a happy hour after. But it, like, but in, not necessarily. Yeah, in New York, there was always like, oh, like we'll go on a hot girl walk and you can meet new people. Ne- Safety in numbers. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of honestly. Yeah, because there would be like That's dozens of people that went. So, <laughs> talk to me about like no, how, no, no. I mean, well, that, in that, numbers. You well, I just think that like meeting people on me. the internet. <laughs> Meeting people on the internet is like really like weird. You know meet, what I'm people meet their husbands and wives what? on the internet yeah, now. Okay, think, now but like through now, Facebook, kind of. through Facebook. I had like when I was living in New York, I had one of my roommates moved out, and me and my other roommate didn't want to leave, so we found another girl to take like move into the extra room like through one of these like Facebook yeah, groups. These Facebook. How did that are... go? You just like like there's no, specific... no no no. I'm saying how did it go? Oh, she was great. Like she's like one of my friends now. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, so like she wasn't a murderer, thankfully. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it yeah, it was perfectly it worked out perfectly well. It'd be funny if they did 
like a hey girls we're all meeting up for a hot girl walk in central park and everyone that shows up is actually a guy like <laughs> yeah. oh fuck we all had the same idea and then you go for a walk that's how guys <laughs> meet guys and then right. fucking, we're walking anyway man let's do the nice say. part about those groups is that they're private like you have yes, to answer yeah. questions to get in like only a girl would know yeah yes, like exactly. how many tampons do you use in a day yeah. or something it's i like was not gonna bro I, I stumbled upon this uh instagram account which i followed it's this girl teaching her i mean her basic premise is like yo dudes don't know shit about the woman's body right so she just goes around asking a whole bunch of questions about the woman's body and it's the funny shit and i learned a whole bunch like for, <laughs> for example i had no idea and whatever i didn't know i had no idea that so she, she asked one of the dudes she said can women pee with a tampon in? oh i know who you're talking about yeah and i was like i was like nah probably not i just got a little plug in there <laughs> no clue what's happening down there, bro. Not my plumbing system. So I, I, I just didn't know. And it's very informative because I mean, I mean, I just don't. I don't never research the female anatomy. I don't ask about the female anatomy. You know what I'm saying? I just do yeah. my part when it comes to. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, yes. very, it's very, it's very informative. It's very informative. Yeah, you can't, you can pee with the tampon. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was the answer. Yes, you could. I yeah, didn't yeah, know. Yeah. Yes, I found yeah, that you out. Could. You can. Yeah, you yeah. can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So shout out to tampons. tampons. Yeah. Tampons. <laughs> <laughs> Lifesavers. <laughs> yeah. Uh so it would be it would be like a hot girl walk in Central Park. And I'm curious to know from your, your perspective, <laughs> ladies, you show up yeah. and you just like stand next to another girl as you're walking and then you're like, Hi, I'm McKinsey. Yeah. What's yeah. your name? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause they're like meant for that. So like yeah. every but like a lot of people are going alone. I mean some people are going with people they already know and then maybe they'll meet like other groups of people. But I mean, the whole point of it is that like you're trying Making to friends. meet other people. Yeah. So it's like, it's not weird to be like, hey, like, it's almost like on? speed dating for friends. For, yeah, for girls. Hi, yeah. what's your name? I'm Mackenzie. Nice. Yeah. I'm Mackenzie. I'm Mackenzie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and then the person's like, uh, no, I'm actually not up here with the girl walk. I'm just walking. I'm just a girl who's walking. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't then know. you just go to the next person. Right. Yeah. Then you, it's strength in numbers. Women are or so different. Right, next guys. up. Fucking, yeah, it sounds fucking, like a nightmare. Can you imagine ever showing up to just like a group of individual dudes that are at the same place? That's, and no, like, that's, that's, that's pickup basketball. That's yeah. pickup basketball. That's yeah. exactly. It's the same. Yeah. Thing. But like, it's I would different. never. It's different. If you don't, you don't, you don't plan it. You just like, I, this is where they going to congregate. Yeah, and have a basketball game, and then it's like, oh, what's up, man? Where you from? What you get to the small talk about? But you don't be like, hey, strangers, let's meet up and play basketball somewhere. Well, That's... don't you have to know what time you're going? Like you're planning nah. something. No, so you no, just assume there are going to be other people there. Yeah, it's just that, like it, I think it the, pops off around this time. I think the whole thing right after the work with like the hawker walks or like things of that nature is that everyone there is there for the same reason to meet people. So you're not showing up being like, why are these girls talking to me? Yeah. Like, you are there f for a reason. So I mm -hmm. feel like it's not weird to be like, oh, hi, I'm Madeline, how are you? Like, yeah. that's that's the whole point. Yeah. You know it's actually wild? I've never really given much thought. When you meet friends, it's dating. Right? Yeah. yeah. I guess like, it's, like, it's high-key dating, mm -hmm. you know, minus the romance. But you like, you meet up with a dude. This has happened, you know, it's happened a bunch of the homies. Or you meet up with a dude and you be like, Fucker's funny, man. He's a funny guy. Yeah, I, like, I like hanging around with him. He makes me laugh. Let me keep Make, him around mm -hmm. for the rest of my he, life. He makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, like, you do other things together. Like, man, he's really not. Man, this is my kind of guy. And it's yeah. just, that's a date. You're dating. Like, anybody, man, finna go to the woo? You want you trying to meet up? It's like, it's like a little date, man. Like, I never really looked at it like that. Yeah, it's, it's cute. It's cute as shit that we have friends. <laughs> <laughs> we have friends. So, I mean, you I, kind of think about it also. Like with you two, like Arian and PFT, like imagine if you like didn't like he, like. Imagine if I never met the Broskis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she said, Shout Kinda. Out to Drake. Facts. <laughs> God's plan. Or like, it, plan. imagine if you didn't have like a platonic crush on each other, then then none of this would happen. That's yeah. facts. Platonic crush. Our uh -huh. friends friends are platonic crushes. A boy crush. Yeah. Good call. Um, another serious piece of advice for this guy would be get a dog. If you get a dog. Or if you have a dog, taking your dog on walks around the neighborhood. Dog park. Stopping in. Yeah, going to a dog park. I've met almost all my neighbors just from having my dogs play with their dogs at the dog park. 
Um, and just if you go into like a business that's dog friendly, uh, everyone is so much nicer to you if you have a dog with you. It just it, it gives people permission to be nicer than they normally would. And then you have a conversation, then you get to know each other. And then next thing you know, you're friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also, I, I do think that um, either doing going out to like a run of basketball or joining like an adult sports league of some sort is a good way too. Mm hmm. Arian's also very correct with going to mom and pop shops and Billy's right about going to bars. <laughs> Even like going on, if you go on dates, like maybe you don't like them, but then they become your friend. Yeah. And then you meet their friends and like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Also coworkers, if you work at like a really cool place like here, like all of my friends who don't even work here, I've met through people who work here. Mutual friends. All right, we're going to take a quick break, talk to you guys about Straight Talk. A new Straight Talk wireless offering is now available where you can get a Walmart Plus membership included on select Straight Talk wireless plans for free. Only Straight Talk wireless gives you unlimited data, talk, and text, plus the new Walmart Plus membership included on select plans, free of charge, nothing, it's all included. Some of the perks of Walmart Plus through select Straight Talk wireless plans, you get free delivery from Walmart stores, free shipping, no order minimum, you also get Paramount Plus, which is great this time of year. Uh, if you want to watch all the shows on there, Champions League, Knockout Rounds coming up, that's on Paramount Plus. You get member prices on gas, all that stuff, and that's all included with your Straight Talk Wireless plan. Straight Talk Wireless is available at Walmart and Walmart.com. All right, so you want to do another voicemail? Yep. Yep, fire them up. Uh, yeah, this is Chad from South Carolina, and me and my fiance are getting married December 22nd. And we've been trying to figure out what we want to have for our first song. And I was wondering if anybody in the crew had any suggestions or, I don't know, like, if y'all had ever gotten married, would y'all, like, what would y'all song be? Bust the pod. Thanks. Crazy bitch, but Buck Cherry. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, I didn't that, hear. It sounded like he was underwater. I can't hear. Yeah, it. he had like the biggest accent. Too. Uh, he's getting married on Friday and wants to know. Uh, it sounded like it was still up in the air what he and his wife's uh, song for their first dance was going to be, and he wanted suggestions. You would ideally like to have that figured out. Now I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna do a little bit of profiling. Chad sounded like somebody who might enjoy some country music. Yes. <laughs> uh. So I would I would say maybe Love and Sunsets by Zach Brown Band, one of my yeah. favorite songs. Um that was the one that came to mind first. I'm sure there's I can think of some others. Kind of love. First song Luke first Holmes. song dance. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Shorty what about, already got his, his shorty already got his picked out. There's no It didn't sound like it. it. There's no way she don't have the first song picked out, bro. I feel like he would know. It sounds like maybe this was the one thing that he was in charge of. <laughs> <laughs> Forty-eight hours out. <laughs> He's like, guys, I am fucking struggling. Okay. Yeah. Also, like, bad news. This is coming out after his wedding. Yeah, true. So. I just thought about that. She's been spending oh, the last boy. like year <laughs> with various binders and like talking to vendors, <laughs> organizing every minute detail of the wedding. And she's like, okay, you are in charge. <laughs> of the song and he's waiting until two days before the event to call up a podcast yeah. <laughs> well, that, call fellas. this guy back live yeah right I, if you're going to the big t round saying country music what, nothing wrong with little randy travis i'm gonna love you forever oh yeah i'm, I'm gonna, gonna love you forever, forever. that's a good I'm, no oh, by the way fellas, we we're talking about Amen. harrison ford's catalog of plane crashes you should do a deep dive into Randy Travis's uh, various escapades. I think he's been caught nude twice, drunk off his ass. I in vaguely public. recall something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, Randy Travis likes liked to get after. I think he died. If right? you start to Google Randy Travis, you get Randy Travis. No, he's health, only sixty four. Randy Travis songs. Yeah, he's very alive. Randy Travis still alive, <laughs> and then Randy Travis net worth. It says he's only sixty four. Oh, knock on wood. That's actually crazy. Yeah. Oh, did at, we break the curse? At some point. Jimmy well, Carter's broken on yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, Randy Travis, he he got hammered as shit and then turned up naked in a convenience store buying packs of cigarettes. Like, there was no issue at all. Hell that yeah. Happens. That happens. Yeah. Yeah, what are you going to do? You um, know, if you really, like, don't know what song it is, go into your to your fiance's phone. Just for this reason, look to her top songs listened. 
figure out which one is about love and meeting someone and then whichever one's most listened to go with that one mm-hmm. okay right. yeah take your fiance's phone and then search through what her most recent text message oh no no you don't even have to do that probably right you don't even have to do right that before before the, right go to her spotify the wrapped go to yeah, her right, spotify wrapped right before the wedding better... lose all trust <laughs> no no go to her spotify wrapped yeah also a non-country one is dead sea by the lumineers that's a good one that is a good one Mm -hmm. um yeah okay we good i think we're good Um, if he wants to steer away from the caucus mountains music that's that's i would suggest um as by stevie wonder it's a little long but oh my god a love song for the ages uh i don't know how in like how you want to dance you know what i'm saying but if you just like want to you know rock back and forth middle school style hands on the hips vibe a song for you donny hathaway i've mentioned on this podcast before um every wedding okay listen this is controversial but it is what it is if you go to any black wedding it still happens and it is what it is step in the name of love gets played by r kelly it is just an all time step classic. So I guarantee you, every black wedding has that shit. And it is what it is. It's a great song. So good luck to you, bro, brother. The opposite is would be the like the Cupid Shuffle yeah. or something. That's on that's a do not play. <laughs> on the white weddings. Yeah. <laughs> Cupid Shuffle gets uh, Cupid Shuffle gets some plays too. I want Chad to call back. <laughs> do you want uh, me to call him? You don't have to call him right now. Star six, seven him. He's two days out from his wedding, but I I want him to call back next week and tell us uh, how it went. Yeah, Chad, call us. Okay, next one. Yep. Let's do it. Hi there, this is Levi from Michigan. Um, I work in the sandwich industry, um, and I was just curious what your guys' perfect sandwich would look like for each other. Mm. Uh, I'm talking bread and uh, condiments, meats, vegetables. You know, what are you putting on there? This is this um, is a this right, is a well, voicemail. Thanks, Hell guys. Yeah. You got to get back to the sandwich factory. So, uh, stay gorgeous, stay beautiful, stay handsome, stay yourselves. You know. All right, have a good one. Bye. That's a great question. I love great. this question. It's I, perfect. And the fact that this guy works in the sandwich industry. I would love to know what his I, job is. I don't sandwich think he mogul? works in the sandwich industry. <laughs> I don't know why. That just seems too weird. He's, he's, he's he said he had to, to get back to the sandwich factory. Man's, yeah. man's, man's calls a random podcast anonymously to lie. For what? I don't know. Huh. I like it's a good keep, question. Keep, keep your skeptic hat on, Billy. Aaron, you want to start? Oh yeah. Okay. I'll kick it off. Uh I would have to sit down like this is off the cuff, right? But all right. First off, straight up, I'm doing <clears throat> regular wheat. I love wheat bread, but I'm a butter both sides and I'm toasting it. All right. Ooh. And upon toasting uh the breads, I'm gonna start with a layer of pepper jack cheese. Then I'm gonna start with another layer of uh, American cheese. Then I'm gonna start with like you gonna sprinkle some like what is the the Mexican cheese? Like, uh, I, think just, yeah. I think it's just mixed. Whatever it is, you sprinkle that Mexican cheese on there. Make sure that's all melted nice and nice and nice and good. That's the thing. All right, that's the that's the essentials. And then you go to I'm gonna put mayonnaise. I know this is I had a long conversation with a lot of my brothers and sisters about mayonnaise, but I like mayonnaise. It is what it is. Put mayonnaise on both sides. Uh, then you go with the lettuce, then you go tomatoes, then you go regular onions, then you go green onions, and then you go with the, the, the meat of it, right? The meat of it, you gonna go with, uh, I love salami. I'm gonna get some pepperoni in there. Um, I'm gonna get some, mm, I don't know if I, I'll put some roast beef in that thing. I'll put some roast beef in that thing. Mm-hmm. Then I'm gonna put some hot mustard on there. The Dijon jump. Put some hot mustard on it. Then salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil. You got me. That sounds that's, pretty good. That's a sandwich for you, bro. That sounds and then, real good. On the side, some jalapeno chips. Fuck with me. Ooh. Do you put the chips on the sandwich? Ooh, if I'm feeling frisky. 
Maybe on half of it, yeah. Both. I'm feeling frisky, yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. you always cut it, you put it all together until it has that little symphony of crackle that, right? Mm-hmm. You just, you, you pat it down and you cut it diagonally because that makes the sandwich last longer. Everybody knows that. That's great. I'm hungry right now. <laughs> all right, I'll go. Um, I would actually take some deep fried turkey, some, some of the dark meat from the deep fried turkey, Dark meat, PFT, Ooh. like the dark meat. I like it. Dark meat's juicier. It's got more flavor. You put that down. So it's got maybe some of the crispy skin built into it. Then you do like a layer of stuffing on top oh, of that. Oh, I forgot the bacon. Sorry. I forgot mm. the bacon. Gotta have bacon on there. But go ahead. Sorry. You do a little bit. Of, yeah, you get that layer of stuffing going. And then on top of that, you're going to do some crispy bacon strips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some real crispy bacon strips. And on top of that, you're going to add in a thin layer of mashed potatoes. Oh, wow. And then on top of that, you're going to do um, a couple a couple leaves of fresh sage. You're going to add that in there. Then at the top, you're going to like take this. a thin spread of cranberry relish, right? Very, very thin. Okay. And oh, also on the turkey, I think you're going to do a little bit of Dijon, a little bit of spicy brown mustard on that. But exactly. then you got the cranberry relish at the top, um, a little bit of hot peppers like jardinera type peppers and then what i haven't told you yet is this entire sandwich is inside of the uncrustable bread the soft white (laughs) bread with no crust on it and you put it in the air fryer and then the whole inside is like a a, a hot pocket in there and that to me i don't know if i've ever had a savory uncrustable but who i bet knocked me over with a feather Wait a second, a sandwich man, it's a good sandwich. Wait, wait, wait a second. Like the peanut butter and jelly uncrustable? No, it's yeah. inside the bread. It's like the same bread format as the uncrustable. There's no peanut butter is and it, jelly in there. Is it bigger? Yeah, it's bigger. It's a little bit bigger, but not not too bigger. You can it's buy bigger. uncrustable. No, I'm just I'm inventing an he's uncrustable he's, he's, with he's a savory filling. He definitely oh. went to fantasy land with this, but I'm okay. Not, he's using his imagination. I'm I'm I would buy that sandwich. That's yeah. abstract. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, to take us back to reality with sandwiches, my favorite sandwich you would have be to a part yuck of my, my yum. Steak. Oh, okay. Good answer. Yeah, yeah. Part of my cheesesteak, uh, <laughs> available Ooh. in almost all uh, Ooh. continental United States. Mm. Uh, my favorite is the classic. Ooh. Part of my cheesesteak. Uh, mm-hmm. Great sandwich. They are good, not sponsoring this ad, bro. Get but they that. sponsor a sponsor certain you, Ugandan man. football team. And that is also mm-hmm. coming out uh, right after the Super Bowl seven-part series That's nice on part. Donnie's YouTube channel, uh, The Wonton Don. Uh, check it out. There will be teasers dropping before. But the seven-part series, Last Chance Uganda, will be coming out after. Oh, I like that name. That's great. I like that name. That's good. All right, you brought me back. Also, good answer with the cheesesteak. I agree. Oh, amazing. Uh, Big T, what do you got? I'm deciding if I want to go. One is very uh, – they're both relatively simple, but uh, I guess I would go steak sandwich on a nice uh, – like a baguette mm. or like a ciabatta. <laughs> um, get your, Everybody wants the, the – the thing now is everybody wants the aioli. I'm not a mayo guy, so no, none of that on there, but some onions, peppers, um, lettuce, you know, whatever you want to put on the steak sandwich. Just put the steak on there, medium well. Mm, Medium Uh, well. Yeah. Okay. Because I I want it to be about medium, but medium now means medium rare, so you have to say medium well. Uh, And then, yeah, you're, you're good to go. All right. Wait, how do you how do you like your steak? I I don't want it like crazy pink, but like medium is fine. But now when you say the just like society keeps shifting further left, the steak community keeps shifting further rare. So now medium is the new medium rare. So I say medium well. <laughs> the Overton I, window of steak. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, you're just getting I, better steak now. I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I agree, but it's fucking hilarious that take. <laughs> I mean, if you say, if you say well done now, people shoot you. 
It's, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It's damn near a crime. That shit is disgusting. A waste of meat. It's gross. I mean, people will get. Yeah, so, I mean, God forbid you say that. But, but if you. Desk. So well, you can say medium well, that's still borderline uh, acceptable, and then you get it medium. It depends on the cut. A lot of well done, like skirt steak, needs it needs to be well done. You can correlate most Big T's takes, I think, to the Overton window of politics shifting. <laughs> I really think. Like you, what else? Well, no, I'm just saying you're like saying you you would like a steak well done. You might as well be saying women can give birth. <laughs> like yeah, in, about, in, just about. <laughs> Those were both acceptable 20 years ago, and now you're now a bigot. They, now they shoot you if you say I don't think they were, though. Like, I don't know, man. Only when, when When were well-done steaks received well by people who actually cook steaks? Because I know my people. You know, it, saying, in the last box. 10 years, it's become like you're you're a heathen. I think you're just ordering more steak now. And, yeah, I think and that's you're what being it is. exposed to it more. Like like we used to be at barbecues and stuff. It'd be like, well done. What the fuck is you doing? Or I don't know. Yeah, if this but might you not could do it. it. Most people just, just do cooked. it. But most people like like they, we got we got berated. That's why, like, because like as a kid, you used to order well done, right? But then after a while, I'd be like, hey boy, that shit nasty as hell. What are you doing? Or y'all might not experience this, but like if you leave too much chicken on the bone, you get berated for that as well. Oh yeah, I, I I'm aware. I my one of my oh. favorite things to do is to take like one bite out of an order of chicken wings, one bite out of every wing. And then post a picture and be like, these were the best wings of my life. I am stuffed. And then just have the quote tweets murder me. I'm like a masochist yeah, yeah. for that. Yeah. That and like, if you ever see like um, somebody post like they blunt and had like they, they or the ashtray from the yeah. blunts. And if there's too much, you know what I'm saying, meat left on the bone, it'd be on your bumper, man. Mm hmm. Or if um, you unseason your meat. That's warranted. You get all that black and it's warranted. That's ridiculous. Uh, Mad Dog McKenzie, do you guys have sandwiches? Yeah. Um, it has to be made by my mom, just because I feel like if I make a sandwich, it like just has to have like a, a maternal touch to it. That's but... that's like such a nice thing to say. We were just yeah. like in sandwich fantasy land. You're like, well, really, the best sandwich is one that's made by your mom. Moms <laughs> do make the best sandwiches. Yes. <laughs> and it's a fact. It's on if, okay, I'm going to say, I'm trying to think of like what bread a toasted white, me after vacation, a toasted white, <laughs> <laughs> and and then it's, I am a mayo girl, so I'm going to do Hellman's mayo, I'm going to do a little bit of yellow mustard, I'm going to do two types of turkey, I'm going to do the honey, maple honey turkey, the boar's head maple honey, and then I'm going to do the boar's head um, buffalo turkey, put that on there, and then I'm doing two slices of provolone, and then um iceberg lettuce but only the but none of none of it with the like the thick ends like where you rip it off of the iceberg head you're like, talking about just a leaf a i'm leaf talking part. about leaves that have no nutritional value iceberg and and then it has to have a side of a chip like there has to be a good salty chip on the side what kind of bread is this on i think it i think like a toasted white but like i'm trying to think or or no 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 an italian bread Mm. Like you get it from an Italian deli and it's like, oh, yeah. And has that good crust on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also lightly toasted, but I don't want it too toasted because then it gets too crunchy and then it like everything falls out the back or it hurts the roof of your mouth. Yeah, that's, that, that's why I can't do white sure. bread. That shit goes straight to the top of the. You just, yeah. That's why tongue, you lightly toast it. It's tongue, <laughs> tongue going to overtime trying to get that shit off. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like other types of bread, but like that's where my mind's going. But like I'm, I'm about to go have this sandwich in about three days at my house. I'm so excited. That sounds pretty good. That's a good point, mm -hmm. Mackenzie. So, um, mine would be very like basic, probably. Like Big T said, the bread, like a ciabatta roll or baguette bread, um, chipotle aioli or chipotle mayo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm okay and, with that. And then just like turkey, American cheese. Lettuce and tomato. She's simple. You just made yeah. a school lunch sandwich. No, exact. No, it's like I'm <laughs> still in elementary school. Yes, and everyone reminds me whenever I like go out in public and get it. Well, yeah, your answer is like I would like to be nine years old again. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, whatever's exactly. in the lunch box. <laughs> yes. No, and and my mom is making it, yeah. so it's yeah. perfect. Or a really good oh, BLT. You, 
You know what's a underrated sandwich, bro? So you go regular PB and J, do whatever you want with the bread, but then you slice up bananas vertically. Yeah, mm. vertically. So good. And then and then lay down bananas in the PB and J. Son, fire. Sounds like Elvis. So an Elvis sandwich with jelly. Yeah. yeah. Did Elvis do that? Yeah. Elvis was a big uh, peanut, peanut butter, butter and banana. banana sandwich guy. All right. Do we have another voicemail? Mm -hmm. Hey, gang. This is Alex from Corning, New York. I have a question mostly for PFT and Arian. I'm going to turn 27 soon, and I feel like 30 is just around the corner. Uh, I know 30 is not like, like a, it's not as bad as people, as crazy as people say it is, but it is like a turning point in a new chapter. So you give myself and I guess the rest of the crew advice for how to get the most out of your twenties, you know, what would you say? And not like, oh, I wish we would have lost more or stuff like that, but you know, fun stuff. Uh, thanks guys. Okay, this is a this is a heavy question. <laughs> run it dude, run it back because it was kind of muffled. He's like, I'm turning thirty in a couple years. He's thinking about turning thirty. How should he get the most <laughs> out of his twenties? He's almost twenty-seven. He's almost twenty-seven. Yeah, he's almost 27, 27. But he's asking how how he should live his twenties, pretty much. <laughs> and then off of that, how we should live the rest of our twenties as youngins on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I'm actually twenty-seven, so so. Yeah. So I would say. Um, it depends on what station you're at in life. I don't know what your responsibilities are. I don't know uh, what your work life is like. I don't know if you're happy at work, if you're kind of up in the air about things. I don't know if you're in a relationship, how serious it is, if you're single. There's a lot of variables here. Um, but I will say that if you're in your 20s and you're thinking about like changing your career and making a life change, that is the time to do it because you get into your thirties and you get uh, so comfortable and so used to whatever, whatever your occupation is that it's going to be very difficult or it's going to be harder to change jobs when you're in your thirties than it would have been in your twenties before you go down all that road. And maybe you get promotions and you get so ingrained in whatever it is you're doing. If you're thinking about making a change, depending on what your responsibilities are and uh, what you need the money for right now in your job that you're at. If you're thinking about doing something crazy and switching up your job, if you really feel passionate, passionately about something else, I would say that your mid to late twenties is a great time to do it. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's solid advice. Um, I think to add to that, if you haven't accrued any lifelong responsibilities, just make sure that you keep it that way. Um, so don't do anything stupid in the next three years because you're in your mid midlife crisis. Um, wear condoms, uh, but if you're already there, you know what I'm saying, just you know handle your responsibilities. Um, I think the biggest thing is like we like to put these milestones and these arbitrary, you know, markers on our life, and they don't mean anything. Like when I hit 30, I, there was no, I didn't really feel much different, right? So like right now I'm 37. I don't feel much different than what I did when I was in my 20s, other than like the knowledge I've accrued and the experience that I've gained, right? Um, I still have a whole bunch of fun. I still enjoy it. It's just, I think my 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 vision is less myopic about what I like, right? It's very focused on, these are the things I enjoy. So I think, I think that's, that's what happens as you age. You just start to harness in on the things that you like to participate in there's not much difference man i mean pft i think you can speak to this too it's just it, you just don't fit especially if you're not bogged down by a whole bunch of responsibilities that you have to do um life is it's just really it's it's what you, it's like age is just a mindset man i know i know dudes who are my age who are who look weathered and feel weathered and talk weathered and i know people younger than me that feel that same way and it's just like just don't try your best to not accrue responsibilities to let life get the best of you, you know, because it can and it will and it will beat you down. So in, enjoy your people while, while you're here and just, yeah, man, it's it's just not that the age thing is not that crucial, man. It's like, there, there's, I guess there's a time where, 
you know, it'll, you'll have to go to the doctor and shit like, shit like that changes. But for the most part, it's just enjoy the shit, man. Yeah. Make money. It's a good time. I don't want to say it's a good time to be impulsive when you're in your twenties, but if you're, if you have a strong passion about something and you have the desire to follow through on it, it's a good time to entertain some of those impulses. Not like, I don't feel like going to work today. Work sucks. I'm going to quit my job and just see what happens. Probably not a great impulse to follow. But if you do feel strongly about like, whether it's a, even like a vacation, like, you know what? I'm going to take a week and a half off work and I'm going to go to Australia. You know, shit like that. Follow those. And if you have like a strong desire to do something else, it's okay to make a major change and you shouldn't necessarily be scared of it if you have a passion for whatever other thing that you're thinking about doing. Once you get, like Arian's talking, you accrue some of those responsibilities, doing shit like that becomes next to impossible. Routine, yeah. It becomes, I mean, the, the opposite becomes routine, right? And I think, I think another big thing is um, comparatively, we like to juxtapose you know, our position and our situation with your friends. So if your friends have gotten married earlier, you're like, man, maybe I'm not as far as long as I should be. Or career wise, man, he's already, you know, he already got a six figure job. I remember I, that shit time and time again, comparison is the theft of joy. That's one of the realest quotes I've ever came across. Like, don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Like you, as long as you got a box to live in and you got some food every night, you, you all right, man. Just focus on the shit that you enjoy. And like PFT said, I can't emphasize that enough. If you don't have any responsibilities, 20s is when you make a move because 27 is not, nobody looks at a 27 year old like, but it's about time he starts. That's, you know what I'm saying? Adults anyway. You'd be like, yeah, you still a kid. You'll figure it out. <clears throat> when you get my age and you still, that's, I think societally, I think that's when it starts to be like, all right, fam, like it's, it's not cute to be broke anymore. Now it's irresponsible. <laughs> yeah. In, in 20s, you got some leeway, but he's figuring it out. He's finding his passion. When you get late thirties, early thirties still cool. Late thirties, it's like that shit. That shit's not cute, my nigga. Handle, handle your business. <laughs> yeah. Good question. Yeah. Okay, we have one more question. We're gonna get into, um, but I want to remind you to go to Sport Clips. Sport Clips is awesome. Big T goes there all the time. Big T loves Sport Clips because yep. your hair grows fast. But I bet you wish your hair grew faster, Big T, so you could go back to Sport Clips more frequently. I, I should just go more just for the vibes. Yeah, just hang out. Yeah. Are you allowed to hang out at Sport Clips without getting a haircut? They've got the waiting area with like the, the cool chairs that are on the basketball benches. I'm yeah. sure you could just go. And they've got the TV there in the waiting area. But you know what? If you go there and you do that, which would be, it would be worth your time, you wouldn't get the MVP experience. Well, when I said go there for the vibes, that's what I meant. Yeah. Just you, do it anyway, even if I don't need the haircut. Get the hot steam towel, the massaging shampoo, yep. and a haircut. Pretty great. Pretty great at Sport Clips. Sport Clips is the best. You can check in with the pros and men's hair and totally check out with pure, uninterrupted relaxation. So come watch an endless stream of sports on TV while getting an awesome haircut. Sport Clips is a game changer. We know that watching sports while getting a haircut sure beats watching your reflection get a haircut. Check it out, Sport Clips. It is a game changer. Also, it's brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. They're offering a brand new product where you can get a Walmart Plus membership included on select Straight Talk Wireless plans for free. Only Straight Talk Wireless gives you unlimited data, talk, and text, plus a Walmart Plus membership included on select plans for free. Some of the perks of Walmart Plus through select Straight Talk Wireless plans are free delivery from Walmart stores, free shipping, no order minimum, Paramount Plus membership, member prices on fuel so you get gas savings. Straight Talk Wireless is available at Walmart and walmart.com. Check it out. All right. Voicemail. Hey, crew. Uh, it's Pat from uh, Massachusetts. Uh, the last episode I listened to, you guys were talking about conversation because Mad Dog got into that conversation with uh, the plane. So my question is, is what is like the most like confrontational thing that you guys have been in like in public? I definitely want to hear Arians because I know he doesn't back down from like confrontation. Yeah, and listen. same thing with Big T. Um. But yeah, that's my question. Like, what is, like, the most confrontational, like, issue in public that you guys have experienced? Hmm. That's my question. Uh, 
love you guys. Even if that's his question. Biggest confrontation in public. Uh, I think, I, you know, I, my younger years, I was very confrontational. Like we used to, it was very stupid, but we used to like go, like we used to go out like to fight. Like that was like the goal. Like like you see somebody and like they look at the wrong way and you get into it. Like, and so I got into a lot of those, like stupid scuffles. Um, I think aside from being an idiot, like, you know, my younger days, um, I haven't really had one like as an adult where I got into it with somebody. I mean, other than this one time, uh, he didn't say anything back and I wanted him to. Uh, I was out with all my kids and there was this dude who we were sitting, it's like one of them open grills. Uh, it's like this brunch spot. And so they was like sitting like right here and like this grill right here. And some dude comes in and he like kind of tosses the plate like towards like the waiting staff like on his table. And he's like, is this how you think this is edible? You think I'm gonna eat this? He says an hair in this and blah, blah, blah. He starts yelling and, and, and I just like snap and I just like yelled at him. I was like, hey, man, nobody wanna hear that, man. I, you know, just like giving my side of the, I don't know exactly what I said, but I was like cussing him out. Like don't talk to these people like that, right? And like, and like everybody just in the room got quiet and he kind of just like, like tucked his tail and left because I was ready to go there with him because that nothing pisses me off more than people who are mean to like waiters or waitresses and they don't want to be there, dog. And so like that, I guess, aside from my younger years when that's that was the goal, um, I think as an adult, that was probably the most uh, competition I've ever had. I've told mine on this show already. The New Jersey Performing Arts Center. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was reaming those people out. <laughs> I mean, I was I was losing it. I was getting like legit... I mean that was that was the maddest I've ever been. Yeah. Other than that, like I don't really know I can't think of a specific instance. Like it takes a lot to get me that worked up. Mm -hmm. Something like egregiously dumb like that. Um Yeah, I don't really I don't know of many others in ter just with like the random public. Yeah. I try to set out of confrontations too. I can't even think of one actually. Now that now that I'm like racking my brain, there's nothing more that I want than to be like in like a Karen situation, or just never be Karen. Just any kind of like where somebody is like wildly out of line and like treating somebody bad. Like I've always wanted to be a part of that, and just have never. It just never crosses my my desk. I would love that. Like that show. What would you do? Mm. Yeah, I would love that. I would love that. Cause more, more like ninety nine times out of a hundred, like I, I do like the admirable thing, like it, when nobody sees, like so, like for instance, like I, I make all my kids, like if we, if we go to the movies, I make them clean all of our row up, like so if people leave popcorn and shit, like I hate that type shit. I make them clean all that row up, or if we park at a um a uh, grocery store and there's like carts in the parking lot our role like they got to clean all that shit up and like they just know i don't even ask them anymore they just know and like i'm not trying to be a dick i'm just trying to be like set the precedent like yo because we were here it's a better place like that's that was mm -hmm. that's the goal and that's so like i have them like say yeah y'all know why i make you do that right and they always say so it's kind of just ingrained in them now but like i've always wanted to like be in a, a situation where somebody pop off and i like i yeah you know, the hero come to save the day. I've always mm -hmm. wanted to do that. Yeah. What about you, Billy? Um, I'm trying to think of anything. I have one off my t my head recently that was like a small like situation where basically I pulled into a parking spot and there was a smart car behind me. And the smart car had pulled into a parking spot in a way and it's, it's a parallel parking. And it's like snuck its way in and backed up its car all the way so it could kind of fit in the last, the parking spot behind it. So it was kind of in two parking spots. So I put um, my car into the parking spot that they were half in. Uh, and then I pulled all the way back. And like I got as close as I could so I could be in the spot. And then, uh, you know, in my head, I'm like, well, they're between two spots. So I'll pull in and I leave like a good amount of space. Like, like, a, like it's small, but like 
if you know how to maneuver cars, you can get out of a space with zero space in between. Mm -hmm. So then I'm coming back to the car and both the cars behind me have gone and it, I left it overnight. And this person, uh, I, I'm, I put my dog in the truck and this person runs up to me and starts yelling at me for being selfish. And I'm like, what's going on? And in my head, I'm like, I haven't thought about the positioning of the cars or anything. There was just this smart car that was half in a full spot. And I'm like, whoa, 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 dude, chill. What are you talking about? I, I, I just got here. Like, what happened? Like, I've never met you before. He goes, you left me no space to pull out my car. You boxed me in. And I was like, what are you talking like?" were you parked in the smart car that was half in the spot? And he was like, yeah. And you left me no space in front of my car. And I was like, well, you know what that means? You left no space for the guy behind you. So what the fuck does that mean? I left you not enough space. And in my head, I, I was like, even I thought I left you enough space, but you didn't leave the guy behind you any space if you couldn't pull it out. So you did the exact same shit that you're blaming me for. And then I just got into it. And I was like, you know what, man, this isn't worth my fucking time. Where'd you even move your car? And he was like, I had to wait till the guy pulled out behind me. And I was like, yeah, so you fucking gave the guy behind you no fucking space. And that like really got me hyped. I, I don't know. I, that's just like, I was like thinking about that after like that motherfucker such wait, a hypocrite. Wait, so the guy parked in his spot, like in front of another car and then yeah. back, but the other car could still back out. Yeah. But and then he you left just trapped no the space smart. for the guy behind him. And plus, he was in between two full parking spots because he had a smart car. And the car behind him was a smaller car that didn't fill up the... Like, so he just, like, took out a whole spot. So, but, like, I did leave him enough space. He would have been able to pull out. And he did pull out. The car was gone. But he had waited for me to just, like, accost me. But at the same time... That means that he left no space for the guy behind him. And the guy, so. But the guy behind him was able to just back out. No, not back out. There was another car behind that guy. It was a packed street. Gotcha. Okay. So it's like, it's, you know, when you squeeze into spots, especially in the Met New York metro area, like you got to be able to know how to put like to, you know, parallel park in a tiny spot and pull out in a tiny spot. Like. No one really gets blocked in unless someone's parked right in front of them. Yeah. And as long as you're not touching the car behind you, you can figure it out. So yeah. that that was just one of those situations that just like, but really like grind your gears, but it's like, not like you're saying I left, you no space. That means that you had no space behind you to back out, which means you did the exact same thing you're accusing me of doing, which I don't even think I did. So oh. takes one to no one. <laughs> I left him space. He, <laughs> and plus you're in a smart car. If you can't get a smart car out of the tiny space you shove it in, then, you know, why the hell you buy it? Good point. All right. I, I honestly don't know what the last confrontation, like there've been a couple bar confrontations that I've been in, in the last like 10 years or so. Not like bar fights, but like close to bar fights. But I wouldn't call – I'm I'm thinking like sober confrontation of like just getting into an argument with another person in public. It's not really my speed. I don't really think that happens to me that much. Yeah, you seem like a chill dude, man. Yeah, I do great on boiling points. You remember that show? No, I don't remember that one. They put somebody in just like a weird scenario. It's kind of like what would you do? Um, mm -hmm. And then they count I think five minutes. You have to go five minutes without like cussing or storming out of that area. And then if you do that, they come in, they give you like 500 bucks. That's going to be easy to do. I think so. De-escalation is always the best policy. I mean, what are you going to do? Knock a guy out, then he hits his head weird falling down, and then you end up in prison for manslaughter? <laughs> that's how That's how Con Air started. <laughs> like, you know how many stories I've heard like that with like, then just like regular dudes head to prison and then they get fucked up because they wanted to be a tough guy in a bar one night. Yeah. How many, how many, how many stories have you heard? Three, of three. Of stories. My buddy's cousin, this guy went to a high school across from me. Yeah. 
Yeah. Actually, Aaron, you got into a public, co- <coughs> excuse me, confrontation with Kirk Minahan on the golf course. A little bit, yeah. If you just hang out with Kirk enough, you'll get into a confrontation. That's true. Yeah. He's a sweetheart, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. We'll see you guys. Hey, see you next year. Oh, my God. Nice. Had to do it. Had to do it, nice. didn't you? <laughs> I love that joke. 2023. Yeah. 2023. That's <laughs> Yo, usually I haven't even taken a shower this year. No, have no, no. you? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if this, I don't know if that makes the rounds with, uh, around y'all, but like y'all ever seen that meme where that is that black woman stepping on them stairs and she has like the baggage from last year Yeah, on, on her and she's stepping into the new year. Please somebody Photoshop EFT <laughs> on that joke. <laughs> you can tell it's a banger joke when somebody just replies with, that's a great joke. I love that joke. <laughs> I just laugh at it every time. Like, it, it will never not make me laugh. All right. 2024, going to be a movie. Absolutely. What's in store for 2024, Billy? Movie. Hey, that's, that's Big a things bar. Coming. What's in store for 2024? Last Chance Uganda coming out. Last, cha- Last mischief. Chance Uganda. Mischief. A lot of mischief coming in 2024. Oh, a lot baby. of mischief. A lot of mischief, baby. All right. We'll see you guys uh, next week. Love you guys. Oh.